Hey everyone, welcome back to the Nintendo Prime. We have six big stories for you today, uh, including one from this company back here. You might have heard of them. Uh, before we get into it, I will remind you we are giving away three copies of Metroid Dread in the month of October, or as I like to call it, Dreadtober. All you have to do is be subscribed to the channel to enter. Otherwise, we'll be announcing a giveaway event for those copies towards the end of October. That being said, let's get into today's big Nintendo news. So our first story actually deals with this system right here, the Switch OLED. Um, some people wondering, you know, can you get your hands on Switch OLED if you did not pre-order? And I actually have some good news for you, at least if you live in the United States. Now I've had multiple people DMing me and trying to tell me that their local GameStops were actually going to have stock of Switch OLED on day one for people who didn't pre-order. Some stores having quite a bit of stock. Now I wasn't sure if this was something worth reporting on. So I called my eight closest game stops today um, across two different states because I'm about an hour and a half away from the state of Minnesota. And it turns out that every single store I called is going to have stock of Switch OLED, both the white and the neon, you know, red and blue version tomorrow. Literally, they'll have it available tomorrow for people who didn't pre-order. Some of them having as much as 30 extra units to sell uh, that's quite a lot now obviously i can't confirm if this is going to be true at other retailers like walmart and target i could have been on the phones all day to i guess try to confirm all that but i didn't i would presume gamestop probably won't be the only place uh, that's going to have extra units day one but if you were hoping to get your hands on switch oled and you do not have a pre-order in it sounds like at least here in the united states it will not be hard to get for now obviously as we get into the holiday season and more towards uh you know Christmas and all that it's usually pretty difficult once you get out of you know to, to the later half of November to get your hands on any systems in a normal year so I would say it might still be hard to get at least uh, during that period but at least right now at launch Nintendo has made the unit plentiful here in the United States I'm sure some people in Japan are hoping the same thing happens there because there has been queues uh, just to pre-order the dang thing and having to like draw names like a lottery just to be able to pre-order so hopefully this is also true in japan where nintendo is just limiting how many could be pre-ordered that way there would be many more on store shelves of note also in, in the united states and i think even in australia um pre-orders for the switch oled have been around for over a month um it really wasn't until a few weeks ago that there was no more pre-orders of this left available so it hasn't really been that difficult of a system to pre-order anyways uh, but if you want to get one day one, they're, they're going to be there. Uh, so that's kind of good news, I guess, for availability. I also have an additional thing here. My local manager uh, told me that they have actually seen a ton of systems for Switch OLED come in to the point that it is a bigger shipment than any shipment they have had of Xbox Series S and Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5. Now, PlayStation 5 haven't really been in store anyways. It's been mostly people buy it online and it gets shipped to the store sometimes. Uh, but the Xbox Series X and S has been available in the store a few times. Uh, the S, I think, is available in store right now. The X has been available a handful of times since launch. And not one of those times were there more units sent to them than there was for this. So uh, that's good. Kudos to Nintendo making sure that there's quite a bit of stock of Switch OLED for launch. So, uh, yeah, it shouldn't be that hard to get your hands on it. And we'll have to see how sales of this system do if Nintendo does report them separately, which since it's a separate price bracket, I at least presume they're going to report it separately um, eventually, at least in their first financial report after this comes out. All right, everyone, we have great news for Animal Crossing fans. Now, Nintendo announced at the last Nintendo Direct that there would be a massive Animal Crossing event happening this month. This was obviously to announce brand new content coming to Animal Crossing, and it seems to be the big update Animal Crossing fans have been waiting for for seemingly a year or more. Uh, there's been a lot of criticism thrown towards the Animal Crossing team for some of the free updates they've been giving along the way that haven't necessarily been of substantial value like people think should exist especially for a game that is the second best selling game on switch to date well rejoice we now have the date and they are officially calling it an animal crossing direct it is happening next week friday on the 15th and it's happening at 9 a.m central time or the other times pictured behind me here's the thing uh we will be live streaming this event of course because hey 
I do enjoy some Animal Crossing, so it'll be nice to see what they are adding to this game and how exciting it might be. Uh, and finally, obviously Animal Crossing fans can kind of stop complaining a bit. We now know at least when they're going to announce the new content. We don't know when it's all going to come. We assume this holiday season, maybe even this month. Uh, but I'm pretty excited just to see what they have cooking because they really have been kind of sitting on their seasonal events for quite some time. Um, and we'll have to wait and see what happens because it does feel like Animal Crossing New Horizons of any Nintendo game at this time really deserves a massive update or massive content addition. Uh, so we'll have to see what they have planned. But still, people have been waiting a long time for this, so now we actually know when it's happening. This is more of a quick update on Monster Hunter Rise. Obviously, we know Sunbreak DLC is coming next summer. Uh, but Capcom has updated the total sales figures of Monster Hunter Rise, and we now know it has sold 7.5 million copies just on Nintendo Switch. That's really not that far off from hitting 10 million. So that's uh, that's really exciting for what at the present is only available on Switch. It does come to PC next year, but for right now, it is currently only available to play on Switch. So 7.5 million is a lot for a third party game on any platform, let alone on Switch. So that's amazing news. Also, it came out of the Tokyo Game Show and the Japan Award Ceremony that uh, the top award at the show, Monster Hunter Rise, actually took that award, sort of. It tied for the top award with Ghost of Tsushima. So when you combine those two together, those are two amazing games on two completely different platforms and they both basically won their version of Game of the Year. Uh, so that's amazing. Um, great news to see a Switch, currently Switch exclusive anyways, console exclusive, um, win a major award like that. So credit to Monster Hunter Rise, Capcom, and the entire team behind the game. It is definitely a game worthy of such an award. So announced just today, or really yesterday I suppose, Pokemon is teaming up with Universal Studios to basically release their own ride and theme park-like area at Universal Studios. Japan, we assume it's going to end up coming to other Universal Studios as well. This isn't too surprising when you consider the success of obviously Super Nintendo World, which is Mario theme, and they've already announced a Donkey Kong edition coming out. Now we got this Pokemon one. The Pokemon one is aimed to launch in Japan by the end of 2022. Uh, so yeah, I'm not really shocked here. Uh, we have seen Pokemon theme parks in the past. All of them have kind of come and gone uh but this would probably be a more permanent addition considering that they can team directly up with nintendo on this project so uh really exciting stuff and i i'm really hoping that one day we just literally have an entire universal park that's just nothing but nintendo goodness because my lord would that be an exciting thing for me as an adult let alone for my children metroid dread reviews are in everybody metroid dread releases tomorrow technically already available in japan in fact you could play a digital copy right now if you're willing to buy it off the japan eShop. remember the switch is region free so yay yay nintendo finally having a region free platform that being said metroid dread technically launches right here in the united states tomorrow and most of the world tomorrow and here is the dealio with this game Metacritic reviews are in. There's been 54 plus different reviews and it has scored an 88. It is actually right up there right now with some of the best top scored games of the year. And it wouldn't be shocking to see Metroid Dread actually up for game of the year at the Game Awards in December. That's how well this game is reviewing. The reviews are really raving on this one as well. Some calling it the best 2D side-scrolling Metroidvania game of all time other people touting that if this is your first time playing metroid this is definitely the game to jump in with you don't need to play the prior games to really enjoy this one um, the polish on it apparently is top notch the music is top notch the combination of platforming and puzzles and boss fights is really among the best they've ever seen for this genre i am just quoting what everyone else is saying about the game because i have not played it yet but man does it look like nintendo and the other people behind this game nailed Metroid Dread. So uh, this just drives my hype level a little bit more. And if you weren't sold on Metroid Dread yet, if you're someone who tends to enjoy really high rated games on Metacritic, this is another one of those high rated games. It's right on the cusp of being a 90. This is astounding for a Metroid game like this. We've never seen ratings like this for prior side scrolling Metroid games. So here we go, baby. It's time to get our Metroid Dread on. And hey, remind you, we are giving away three copies of this game actually this month. Uh, so if you happen to not be able to afford one or are planning to get one 
uh, you know, at launch or whatever like that. We have three copies we're gonna give away. Uh, all you gotta do is be subscribed to the channel and we'll announce the winners at the end of the month. So I'm sure by now many of you guys are aware that um, Joy-Con drift has been a problem with Switch really since day one. Uh, there's been a number of quote unquote solutions, but none of them have even been permanent. Even the one where you put the pad behind the thing, which juts it out, it's still not a permanent fix. People who have done that, Nintendo included, has actually done that on some of their Joy-Cons it still ends up drifting. So here's the thing, there's been a number of lawsuits happening worldwide against Nintendo over this, and with litigation and everything, it takes many years for these lawsuits to play out. Switch OLED's about to come out, and yes, I can confirm these Joy-Cons here are exactly the same as all the rest. Nintendo didn't do anything to improve them other than obviously give you a white color. Uh, so yeah, it's gonna have Joy-Con drift as well. So in wake of this system coming tomorrow, Euro consumers uh, decided to come out and really put Nintendo on blast. Uh, so here's some quotes here, it says, there's not actually enough going on from Nintendo to satisfy adv advocacy groups uh, due to the ongoing argument that Nintendo is continuing to sell a product with known and consistent defects. Euro Consumers is a group that represents five national consumer organizations and has issued a press release challenging Nintendo on its continued sales of existing Joy-Cons. Credit to Nintendo Life for this. There'll be a link to their full um, explanation behind Euro Consumers down below. But let's get into the press release. It says, the new version of the Nintendo Switch console, the Switch OLED, expected on October 8, 2021, shows an unsolved technical problem with its controllers, an issue commonly called Joy-Con drift that prevents players from playing the game properly. Nintendo is quite aware of this flaw, yet it still plans to roll out the new Switch with the old problem. Euro Consumer calls Nintendo to account. This flaw has previously been raised with Nintendo. Firstly, in January of 2020, test a chat such touch on a coupe, Euro Consumer's Belgium national organization sent a letter of formal notice to Nintendo Europe, GmbH, calling on the company to repair all of the defective products free of charge and to publicly communicate about the defect. In January 2021, the BEUC, the European Umbrella Group for 46 independent consumer organizations, launched an external alert to the CPC network about a widespread infringement with union dimensions of the EU consumer law related to the premature obsolescence of the Nintendo Switch. On top of this, the EU action, two class actions have been launched in the United States and Canada. Firm has filed an application to begin another class action. Nevertheless, Nintendo has taken no actions to remedy the flaw or alert consumers. It even issues a new Switch OLED with the exact same Joy-Con design with the exact same inescapable defect. Meanwhile, Nintendo keeps on putting a great deal of emphasis on the quality and versatility of the Joy-Con in its advertisements. This early obsolescence is not only unfair and harmful to consumers, but also affects the environment, creating a pile of unnecessary and extremely polluting electronic waste. Uh, beyond that, says Euro Consumer states that it sent a letter to Nintendo with four requests to adequately inform consumers of drift and to clarify an expected life cycle of packaging, fully respect the legal product guarantee without the burden of proof of cost to the consumer, provide clear contact details at Nintendo for resolving Joy-Con issues, resolve the flaw to ensure a more sustainable version of the controllers. Euro Consumers also makes clear that it'll participate in dialogue testing with Nintendo. So Euro Consumers, obviously being a giant advocacy group for a bunch of consumer um, places, is basically putting Nintendo on public blast. This is the first time we've seen a massive public blast that wasn't lawsuit related in a while. Um, they do bring up a number of lawsuits that are happening. There are more than the ones they brought up. Uh, I find this to be really fascinating because uh, obviously they're putting a lot of pressure on Nintendo to actually address this. And this is something that might get brought up in future investors meetings because investors are going to want to wonder, hey, why are you guys purposely pissing off the Euro Consumer Group? It makes no sense. Why don't you just make a better product that gets rid of this flaw? Um, they already, by the way, offer free repairs in the United States and certain countries in Europe. So this is something Nintendo seems to be acknowledging is a problem, but without outright saying that's why they're offering free repairs. They also don't make it known the best way to contact them. As an example, even in the United States, if you try to do it on their website, they'll refer you to a phone number. And when you call the phone number, you got to jump through some hoops with customer service before you can even do it. It's not like a super easy thing to do. It's, it's not hard. 
but it could be made easier is essentially what I'm saying. But that would require Nintendo takes full responsibility for Joy-Con drift in the first place, which they haven't been. And I've talked about for a while. I think the reason they didn't fix the Joy-Cons on Switch OLED is really, really simple. They have ongoing lawsuits and they're trying to win those lawsuits and they're not going to win them if they literally provide the proof the people going against them are saying exist and that is that there is a flaw nintendo is aware of it and then nintendo should be fixing it if nintendo fixes the flaw before the lawsuits are really you know tried in court nintendo is probably going to lose every single one because that would be an acknowledgement from nintendo of wrongdoing it's kind of the unfortunate part of the legal process and especially when you see switch oled where nintendo has fixed the kickstand they fixed the screen issues they even made the rails you know not not so wobbly nintendo has done a lot to strengthen the switch oled and get rid of some of the flaws of the original switch but they're not being sued over any of that they're not being sued over the bad kickstand over the bezels on the screen over the wobbly rails they're not being legally charged with anything for that they are being legally charged with Joy-Con issues, and notably the Joy-Con are the things not being fixed at the moment. I think it doesn't take a rocket scientist to put two and two together to see why that's the one flaw, the biggest flaw, that isn't being addressed at the moment. Um, again, I'm not saying these lawsuits shouldn't exist, we need to hold Nintendo to task. And I'm not saying without the lawsuits it wouldn't have been fixed. But everything else was fixed, so it is what it is at this point. Um, I think we're just going to have to accept for the rest of the lifetime of Switch that this is going to continue to be a problem and just pray their next generation device or Pro or whatever the hell is coming down the line actually addresses this problem. Um, because yeah, it's not just bad for the environment. They do bring that up. There's already a lot of electronic waste every single year from cell phones. Um, but it's just, it, it is a bit irresponsible of Nintendo to give consumers a product that knowingly is likely going to have issues like this within a year of ownership. All right, folks, that's what we got for you today. Those are the big stories. I hope you learned something um, and obviously got informed on a lot of really, really good news and then some obviously pressure on Nintendo from the Euro Consumer Group. So that's it. That's what I got for you today. Tomorrow, we will be doing a live stream an hour early just from my phone. I know you might be like, why from your phone? Because I am going to be outside GameStop one hour before they open up to pick up my original Switch OLED pre-order along with my copy of Metroid Dread. So I'll be chit-chatting with you guys and we'll be talking all the hype over Dread and, and OLED and all that as I wait to pick up my you know, original orders for those products. Uh, beyond all of that, we also will have an additional live stream tomorrow night. Uh, where we are likely going to be giving away this system um, we'll see i haven't made a final decision on it remember this switch oled is broken uh so keep that in mind it only works in dock mode um but you do get the dock and the cool joy cons and all that we'll see some people have suggested i hold on to it and maybe do a future video in a few months where i fix this oled when there's new panels and stuff available that's definitely a possibility for me to consider uh, for right now, um, I am highly considering giving it away or if nothing else, maybe I'll keep the OLED system and give away the dock and the joy cons for someone who could use it because I can still fix this OLED panel, um, you know, this OLED switch, I guess, in the future without those things. So, um, well, either way, we'll at least give away something tomorrow night that's related to the switch OLED. Uh, so you're going to want to tune in for that. Um, I'm really, really excited about that live stream. We, we got a lot of cool stuff to talk about. Might even pop in some Metroid Dread if I could get my capture equipment working correctly just for the hell of it, just, just to see what happens. Um, anyways, folks, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I'm glad to be back doing news. Uh, I, I, I kind of missed it, honestly. Uh, I, as much as I love making all my original content around this, I'm pretty excited. By the way, I do have one more Switch OLED video I hope to drop tonight. Uh, my final impressions of after spending over a week with Switch OLED. Um, I got a video that I'm doing on that. I also have a video on Switch OLED accessories. That won't be coming until later in the weekend. Uh, but this video, I really want to get done for this product uh, before launch. So if there's anybody still on the fence, they can at least know after my entire journey with Switch OLED from when I got it to when I broke it, what's my experience with the product and do I suggest anybody actually picks this thing up or is my suggestion to just pass? We'll have to wait and see for that video. Thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next one.